All right, uh, before we jump into halogenated hydrocarbons, and I know this is what's due today, um, halogenated hydrocarbons are not terribly difficult. Um, they have a tiny, tiny extra rule that you need to worry about. And uh, that rule has to do with um, what order you put things in and uh, how it affects the addresses. Because we've seen before the addresses of um, things like methyl and ethyl groups matter. In other words, that where branches are placed. So I just want to do a really quick review of a hydrocarbon. We'll just do a really basic one. Something like that. So we'll put out our hydrogen tickies. And this is just a normal hydrocarbon um, with branches. And it is an alkane. Boom. OK. So we should remember how to do this. First thing we do is we circle our main chain. And I am seeing our main chain looking like this. You could also have gone right to left, right? Or left to right, rather. Because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which means the main part of the molecule is a hex, which means that this is hexane. Then you move on to the branches. Oops, I just realized I forgot a hydrogen there. My bad. Um, we have a, shoot, apologies. We have an ethyl group here. We have a methyl group here. So let's see what our numbers are going to look like. One, two, three. So three methyl, four ethyl. So we've got ethyl in, on group four, or on carbon four, and a methyl on carbon three. Or we have an ethyl on carbon three and a methyl on carbon four. Uh, in this case, we're going to get our first thing to be the lowest number because it turns out both of these are going to give us the same numbers, so we're going to defer to the size of the chain, which means that we're going to have 3-ethyl-4-methyl. Dash dash and then I'll just move that over so it's right up against, so it's one word. Methyl, well, it's 3-ethyl-4-methyl-hexane. So just a quick recap to get our brains going. Now let's get into um, the new stuff. So we're going to be adding halogens onto some hydrocarbons. So halogens are your group 17 uh, atoms. Um, when they do ionic compounds, they really like to become minus 1 charged ions. But since organic molecules are not ionic, they are molecular, that means that they don't have any charge at all, so it doesn't matter. But these are your uh, fluorines, your chlorines, your bromines, and your iodine. And I mean astatine as well, but like you hardly ever see it. So the special way that we um, write down halogens. If there's an F in the molecule, it gets the prefix fluoro. If there's a Cl in the molecule, it gets the prefix chloro. You can probably see where we're going with this. So they kind of look like that. All of the other rules apply. So we still care about the main chain. We still care about naming branches. But we're going to put all of these before branches. Now the nice thing is, 
In science 30, you do not generally see molecules that have like multiple features very often. So we're going to stick with the basics here. And I'm going to just very simply start off with a very simple molecule. Let's put a CL on here. And that's it. So we look at our, I hesitate to call it a main chain, right? Because it's one carbon. But since it's one carbon, uh, this guy is going to be called methane. And then all we need to do is describe the halogen that's on there. So there's only one of them. We do not need to use mono for one of anything. We do need to say what it is, though, and it is a chloro. So that's our chloromethane. Let's make it a little bit more difficult. Let's do maybe something that has two halogen atoms attached. Something like that. So now it's still going to be a methane, right? Because it's only one carbon. But in this case, um, there's a fluoro there and a fluoro there. Remember, we use ditri-tetra when we're referring to how many of something there are. So since there are two fluorines, this becomes Di fluoro. So there we go. There's di fluoro methane. What if we add something a little bit different to this? What if we add, I don't know, let's keep those two F's where they were and let's uh, let's tack on a BR. And we'll leave this one on top of hydrogen for now. So it's still a methane. And now we have three halogen atoms. Boom, boom, and boom. And since we go in alphabetical order, bromo goes before fluoro. So this is going to be bromo. And then we still have those two fluorines, so di fluoro methane. And we'll just select that, move it so it's part of the first or the second word. So bromo di fluoro methane. So far, pretty simple stuff. Let's move on a little bit further. Let's just do another couple examples. What if we have something that's got more than one carbon? What if we've got something like that? Which is going to be a prop. It's going to be a propane of some, some type. Uh, let's throw a fluorine on here, a fluorine on here, and a fluorine on there. And I think that's all we're going to put on there. And the rest can be hydrogens. Okay, so same same idea. Main chain, three carbons. That's a propane. And then our halogen atoms. There's three of them on here. Now the now that we're past having. Uh, just one carbon in the main chain, the numbering does matter. So there's a couple of ways to number this main chain, right? We could go one, two, three, or we could flip it around and go one, two, three. Remember, we want to minimize, we want to get the numbers the lowest they can be. So that means I'm going to be numbering my carbons like that. That gives me a fluorine on carbon number one and two fluorines on carbon number two. 
So let's go back to my green marker and the numbers are going to be 1, 2, 2. So it's 1, comma, 2, comma, 2. And then we have to talk about how many we got. We got 3. So this is going to be a tri fluoro. Get that nice and close. Make it look good. And boom. So 1, 2, 2 tri fluoro propane. Now, one last little thing. Um, we notice we're not talking about the hydrogens. The reason why is because it's assumed. We assume that there's going to be hydrogens on whatever spots are left. So really, this is cool because it saves us a little bit of time when we're trying to communicate what the chemical is like. So you're going to... So propane, boom, we have our three carbon main chain, and then they say, okay, on carbon one, put a fluorine. On carbon two, put a fluorine. Put another fluorine on carbon two. And then, boom, 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 put the rest of the bonding capacity, make them into hydrogens. So a couple things, remember, you need to do is make sure that you're um, numbering uh, for each thing that is there. We're using monoditritetra for the amounts of things. We're keeping the numbers low, and we're also making sure that we um, put our halogens in alphabetical order. So let's just do one more example. And I'm going to go a little bit weird with it, so let's put... Uh, let's see... We're going to make an, what's called an HCFC, hydrofluorochlorocarbon. What does that mean? It means that it's got hydrogens in there somewhere. It's got chlorines. It's got fluorines. And it's got carbons. The name of the thing tells you what it is. Let's put another fluorine on this guy. And then you know what? We're going to put... Uh, Let's put one more fluorine on this, this guy, and then the rest will be hydrogens. Okay, so we're still not doing branches, and that's fine. We're not going to do branches in this um, when we're learning about hydrocarbons. Or sorry, um, halogenated hydrocarbons. So here is our main chain, straight shot, five carbons. This is a pentane. Awesome. And now we have to talk about all the stuff we've added on. For this, I'm going to use blue and I'm going to use green just because we've got two different um, atoms to keep track of here. So I'll circle my fluorines in blue and I'll circle my chlorines in green. So before we move on, we have to make a decision about how we're going to count the carbons in this molecule. So again, we can count from left to right, or we can count from right to left. If I count from right to left, my fluorines are going to have, or all my stuff's going to have high numbers. If I count like this, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'll have a 1, 2, 3, 3, or sorry, yeah, a 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 5, business. That's a lot of numbers. If you add the numbers up, it's going to be very high. If I count from left to right, I'm going to have 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4. The total amount of numbers is much lower. So since we have to do this in alphabetical order, chlorine comes first. It's going to be a 1. Oops, I didn't mean to do it in purple. Let's get rid of that. Green. So there's a chlorine on carbon number one, there's a chlorine on number two, and there's a chlorine on carbon number two again. So this part of the molecule is a 112 trichloro. And then we have to deal with the fluorines, and this is going to be a 1, 1, 
three, four. One, one, because there's two fluorines on carbon one. Three, four, and since this is four, it's tetra fluoro. Now I just have to maneuver this guy in place. Oh, it's actually pretty close as far as uh, the space. I thought it was going to be bad. Put my little dash there. So yes, these, these chemical names get to be really, really unwieldy. They get to be big. But as long as we make sure that everything is right, we got our main chain correct. We've got our flori or chlorines named and located, and we talked about how many. We got our fluorines named and located, and we said how many. So that's the, that's the core of the skill you need to do. So I'll see you in a minute for the next video, which is going to be about alcohols.